Namaste. My name is Aramuga Swami. I am the managing editor of Hinduism Today magazine. We've been asked to provide this recorded presentation on the California textbook controversy for the Hindu Mandir Conference. Let's begin with a bit of history. Just how and when did religion come to be taught in American schools? In the 1940s, a series of Supreme Court rulings effectively eliminated religious teaching of any kind in the U.S. education system. Then, in the 70s and 80s, the courts said religion could be taught not to indoctrinate, but as part of world history. Schools could not teach religion, but could teach about religion. California was one of the first states to take advantage of the change and incorporated religion in its text for the 1991 school year. At the time, Hinduism Today examined those textbooks and consulted with leaders of other religions about them. We reported the results in our October 1991 issue. Just about everyone was unhappy with those books. Our evaluation was that Islam and Hinduism were the most poorly presented, followed by Buddhism, Catholicism, and Judaism. Unfortunately, the Hindu community paid little attention to the text or our report. It was not until 2005 14 years later that Hindus took issue with the books. The Muslims took issue at the time, and the texts reflect their desires. We will explain the California adoption process first, then go through the state guidelines under which the books are supposed to be created. California law mandates that during the sixth grade, every student must study ancient civilizations, including India. Every six years, the State of California Board of Education considers texts for this purpose and puts them through a review process. The proposed books were made available in 2005 to the public. Two Hindu organizations, the Vedic Foundation and the Hindu Education Foundation, suggested edits. The process only allows for minor changes, such as the rewording of a sentence, omission of part of a paragraph, change in an exercise, or an alternative photograph or chart. The board then decides which edits to accept. The books are adjusted accordingly and placed in the schools. When it was all over in 2006, even with the anti-Hindu intervention of Dr. Witzel of Harvard, 73% of the edits proposed by Hindus were adopted, but major problems remained. In general, the problems with the books fell into three areas. First, the Aryan invasion is presented as absolute fact. This theory, or a variation on it, remains central to the depiction of ancient India in every text, even though it has no supporting historical evidence. The ten proposed 2005 books displayed remarkable lapses of scholarship. For example, the Oxford University Press book, The Ancient South Asian World, states, quote, But not everyone in South Asia is a Hindu. Some, like most Nepalese, are Buddhist. In fact, Nepal is 89% Hindu. The same book recounts the story of the Ramayana and concludes, The monkey king Hanuman loved Rama so much that it is said it is present every time the Ramayana is told. So look around, see any monkeys? You remember George Allen, the Republican candidate for president, calling an Indian photographer a macaca, a monkey? The Indian community likewise took the Oxford book statement as a racist affront as the likely reaction among sixth graders would be for the students to look with ridicule at any Indian in the class. Let's look at some examples of the requested edits. The groups asked that the following three sentences be deleted. Quote, there was only one group that did not belong to any Varna. Its members were called untouchables. They performed work other Indians thought was too dirty, such as collecting trash, skinning animals, or handling dead bodies. The California Board of Education Committee decided to omit the underlying sentence only leaving the images of a class of people being consigned to work with garbage, animal skins, and corpses for the 11-year-old students to reimagine. Another edit involved this sentence. Quote, if you had earned bad karma, you might come back as a chicken, a fish, or a pig. Even a mosquito had a soul. Fortunately, this one was deleted. One exercise read, Quote, use the internet to learn about Hindu customs concerning one of these topics, the Ganges, cows, funerals, diet. The Hindus requested that loftier topics such as nonviolence or Ayurveda be considered for inclusion as research subjects instead. The committee decided to leave this exercise alone. 
Imagine the dynamics of a classroom with two Indian students and the ridicule that could follow cursory research by sixth graders on cows or burning cats. Almost without exception, each book's photos of Hindus were negative, while photos of other religions were positive. This one shows a, quote, Brahmin and an untouchable or Dalit. The Brahmin is, in fact, a Muslim, praying in the distinctive manner of Muslims and is not a Hindu at all. The disturbing picture of the Dalit, a profoundly negative social image, has no parallel in the presentation of the other religions. In contrast to the pigsty image used for Hinduism, is this beautifully illustrated story of Ruth and Naomi used in the chapter on Judaism's early history. For another comparison, let us look at an example of the 186 edits proposed by the Institute for National Resource Center for Accurate Jewish Content in Schools, whose sole job is to review textbooks. Nearly every one of their edits was accepted by the Board of Education. The original text read, Quote, King Herod was known for his cruelty and the additions he made to the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. The objection was made. The statement of Herod's cruelty is another instance of unnecessary negative information about Jewish kings. The Judaism edits were reviewed by Naomi Janowitz, professor of religious studies, UC Davis, a Jew, and David Nystrom, professor of biblical studies, North Park University, a scholar of Christianity. Their decision? Delete the objectionable statement. Repeatedly, statements about slavery in ancient Israel were deleted, even though this institution was justified theologically from the Bible. The consequences of it remain with us today in racist discrimination against African Americans. Two lawsuits followed. The first was by the Hindu American Foundation. They sued the Board of Education and won in state court, the judge concluding the board followed invalid underground regulations in evaluating the text. He ordered the Board of Education to revamp its policies for future textbook reviews. The second suit was brought in federal court by California Parents for the Equalization of Educational Materials. Their suit claims the Board of Education has violated the civil rights of Hindu school children by advancing an inaccurate and derogatory picture of Hinduism in the sixth grade books, and that the Board failed to adequately address voiced Hindu concerns. This lawsuit is proceeding.